Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Thank you for joining us for the Cosmic Weather Report. We're also gonna be talking about the Codon Ring of Union, which is built by four super special archetypes. Those archetypes include the Alpha, which we are in transit for right now. They include the Philosopher, the Four. They include the Water Goddess, which is the 29, and the Playmate, which is the 59. And yeah, super special time for relationships right now, for good or for bad, things are going to happen, especially with the nodes and where they're at. So Ashley was speaking about the coding of union, which is here on the cusp between Leo and Virgo. And we have the, the sun and Venus here in the beginning. They are going to conjunct in gate four on Sunday, I think. And there are some aspects. So I can, like what you just said, Ashley, I, I feel like possibly with the square that we have had this week between Venus, which is about relationships and our values, and then Uranus, which is about unexpected event and quantum leaps with that tension that we've had. Definitely, there can be some unexpected things in relationships. And the other thing that we're seeing now is that Venus is going to be in trying to Chiron and Chiron is a wounded healer in 51. So there also there can be some shocks, but the fact that there, there, there is this harmonic relationship. So everything when you see inside of the ring that is blue is harmonic relating. And then when you see red, so for example, here between Chi between Venus and Uranus, that is tension, creative tension. Mm. It doesn't have to be bad with creative tension. So with this trine between Venus here in Leo and then Chiron and Aries, both are fire sign, there can be something that before has been shocking in relationships, could have some kind of healing, some kind of resolution. But it's in fire. So that could also be like something burns up. <laughs> And it's like done or, you know, what does it mean? We don't know really. It could be about forgiveness, could be about understanding, but there is something that wants to happen in a healing sense, instead of continuing to shocking you in the same way with this relationship between Kyra and, and Venus right now. Wow. Is there going to be feminine healing too, since Venus is the feminine archetype? With the shocks, like how does that, how, like other aspects of what Venus represents, how can that, like from an astrological pr perspective, because we're talking about the gates, but too, like as the planet of Venus, what opportunity is coming when it meets or is an aspect with the Chiron archetype? I feel the important thing to remember is that we see here that Venus is retrograde. So she's going to go back here for a while and <clears throat> anything that's happening now there's going to be a possibility to actually live it one more time. So for all of us, I feel it's about values and I feel it's what we have received, what we are able to receive, what we want to receive. And there's something with Venus that it's like she's taking on and taking on. And then if she never gets rid of what she's taking in, there's no more mm. space. So I feel for all of us, for the feminine in men, the feminine in women, it's like, what have you received? Are you a kind of garbage bin or what kind of like, what are you receiving? And, and are you, do you want to keep receiving that? So it's a reevaluation. And some of these things that are aspecting with her, like whatever she's doing now, she's going to be able to reevaluate and then feel it again. And like I said the other day, then she comes back, she goes in in Virgo. There, I feel there can be deeper healing in this code ring of alchemy. So first code ring of, like you were saying, union. So a lot of relationship stuff coming up in the coming month and reevaluation with those relationships. And then there's a deeper healing that also has to do with the body, the ancestry, the patterns that we can see here in the code ring of alchemy in Virgo. And then I believe that she's going to be hopefully really happy and really empowered as she goes in to Libra, where she's, you know, mm -hmm. the ruler, double ruler of Libra and Taurus. So here he can, she comes out and she can be social and she can be in her element again. But really, now the work is in the fire sign of Leo and everything that's aspecting to that kind of fire, which some of the things are going to burn up. Some of the things, there might not necessarily be this calm solution, but there is a possibility as she's coming back over here in the last degrees of Leo, where there is more about the intimacy, the commitment, the kind of the 
possible possibility mm-hmm. in relationship. But now mm-hmm. it's going to be more about finding our leadership somehow and our discernment and our medicine in kind of a little bit of the challenges that are going to be happening to us is what it feels like. Yeah, that's perfect. There's this opportunity to reevaluate and go back over maybe even different commitments that you've had, different contracts, different unspoken agreements, and being able to reevaluate in the relationship and like having this co leadership happening too, where two people are meeting and bringing up the truth of what's what's inside, so that they can reevaluate like are the values aligned? Can we move forward together with these values? You know, and so I feel like when we don't speak the truth, we hold, we hold it back, we withhold. And sometimes we're not even aware of our truth. So now Venus is retrograde turning inward to be like, what do I want? What is my truth? What are my values? What do I stand for in this relationship with the other or with myself? And what are my boundaries? And, you know, how can I act and speak responsibly, taking accountability and ownership for things? How can I be autonomous and sovereign while still being in committed relationships or partnerships? And what is best for the whole? And like Bella said, like either burning the whole thing down or like reevaluating what does need to be burned down within it. Sometimes you don't need to throw out the baby with the bathwater. And sometimes you do because the other person is not going to commit to the new arrangements because just because you've committed to something a month ago, a year ago, 10 years ago, you are able to reevaluate things and say, this is just not working anymore. I don't want to feed this, whether it's codependency or whether it's an old arrangement agreement and you've grown and things are different for you now. It's important to go over that first and foremost, getting clear with yourself and then sharing that with the other so that you can have a discussion and maybe potentially move forward together. And if not, you'll be leading yourself in a new way. And if yes, maybe you'll find new ways to show up in relationship with equanimity and equality, and you guys will be able to do things together. Yeah. And I would say, because you and I actually are not going to come on again until Tuesday next week. So there are a few days with no weather. <laughs> it doesn't mean that everything stops. It just means that we are not coming on. So there, there's one thing I want to highlight for all of us. So looking both at the wheel and at the body graph, and many of you are more familiar with the body graph. So what we're going to have in a few days this weekend is that the sun and Venus are going to be together in gate four. And that's the frequency band of intolerance, understanding, forgiveness. And then we're going to have Mercury and Mars together. So these are all inner planets. These are all close to our personal life. They're going to be together in gate 47. And that is about oppression, uh, transmutation, and transfiguration. We also call it the gate of karma. So knowing that there are these deep patterns of karma in our body, in our coding of alchemy, and Mm -hmm. then there are these deep patterns of similar to the vocation or core core wound of guilt with a forgiveness aspect in the four so jinky four and jinky 47 they are going to be together in an ashna that's not defined by the transits so it's the transits are not saying this is the way that we're going to process that so now for example they are saying it's an abstract process that's what's defined right now that's what's that was light, lighted up or highlighted for the collective. No, this weekend is going to be an undefined ajna with so many possibilities. So depending mm-hmm. on what your own gates are, who is in your life, these 47 and the four are going to be activated and met in different ways. But those are themes. Forgiveness and karma is very big. You love it. And it's heavy though, but it's heavy. It's so heavy. It's very heavy. Allow yourself to see what's underneath because as long as you are blind to your own things. You're not going to notice any patterns showing up in your relationships and you're going to be projecting and you're going to be blaming. And projection is the number one killer of like unions. And this is about the codon ring of union and the codon ring of alchemy, like Bella was saying. The codon ring of union for 72959. This is what Richard has described it as. And I'll give you the other code and ring of alchemy too. This is what you're working with right now. The ultimate role of the ring of union is in the purification of human relationships across our planet, containing the collective codes to bring the human family into realization of its state of higher union. These four gene keys have long governed human relationship patterns and their dysfunction on our planet. The combined dynamic of virtue with forgiveness, devotion, and transparency sets the stage for a completely new phenomenon to be set to be seated in humanity, collective leadership. 
The codon ring is currently undergoing a great deal of spontaneous mutation in our DNA and is directly responsible for a huge shift in which, in the way in which we humans relate, particularly through our sexuality and our gender. Yeah, so this is what we're moving through. Every year we get to move through the codon ring of union. Every year something new will, will come up and be transformed in us, the opportunity to grow and evolve with ourselves, within ourselves and with others. And then the codon ring of alchemy, like Bella said, is the 47. Here we go. The six, the gene key six, 40, 47, and 64, which currently Mercury is in gate 64 for a little bit longer and it'll move out of it. But here, this very powerful genetic grouping known as the codon ring of alchemy plays a pivotal role in the transformation of the human species. Each of these four gene keys will transmute your DNA so that there is no longer any interference in your physical body. This is a very powerful genetic grouping. The sixth gift is breaking down the barriers in human relationships. The 40th gift is forging this new openness into our communities. The 47th gift is allowing us to transform our old ways. And the 64th gift is opening us to a fresh set of possibilities for living in a new way. This is the job of this codon ring to activate a process of karmic release that allows your highest subtle bodies to manifest directly through your physical body. By transforming all our old ways and opening us to a fresh set of possibilities, these deep alchemical process, processes will gradually bring peace to earth. Lots of possibility. We shall see if we can create this on earth. And I hope that each of us will be doing our work and working with the weather instead of being a victim to it and of it. And last thing, just remember today is a six line day. So it's not a day to get too bogged into your little perspective and your fixed view. Of course, with a lot of Leo, it's fixed fire. So you can get a little bit fixed and a little bit intolerant. Mm -hmm. It's a six line. It's the seventh jinky. It's about humanity, the collective, us moving forward into the future. So keep that higher perspective, both both in your kind of personal life and if you are doing something that's more kind of connected to the gene keys or mm. the bigger scheme of things. Yes. And if you are interested, we have two potentials today. One is ours, one is not ours. I'll share first what is not ours. So Jerry Littlejohn, she does a threshold flute offering i don't know what to call it but basically every six line day between the six line and the first line on the moment that it transition she plays one of the flutes that are associated with what we are moving into so we it's a way to honor the threshold and as you're looking back and seeing what happened during the seven you get to reflect you get to you you get to look at it from backwards and then move turn the other way and go forward into what we're heading into which is the four which is the philosopher so we'll honor the alpha today. We'll look at the higher perspective. And like Bella said, take in many different perspectives too, because there's a lot of potential available to us when we move outside of our fixed perspective and move into the philosopher. So forgiveness can be possible as well, because when you're able to hold many perspectives, you're not stuck with one opinion or one thing that you're, you believe in, and you get to see things from other people's point of view. And oftentimes that can lead to forgiveness because it's a portal to understanding what's happening in you, what's happening in them, and knowing that each perspective and experience of this reality is valid and true. So thank you for joining us today. Please, if you are interested in building a stronger core inner stability center for yourself, join us for the foundation masterclass that's happening in seven minutes. So if you are quick about it, you can join. If you're already on our email list, there's an email. You can go find it. Click on the link to join the masterclass. And on the page for live, there are like a million posts too. So you yeah. can't miss it. <laughs> you can't miss it. Just go a little digging a little bit and you'll find it. It'll be there right on top. So. Okay. Thank you.